Okay, so I started the registration also. Uh, welcome to the Human Computer Interaction course uh, at Politecnico di Torino. We, will, we are going to do this course uh, online for most part, except probably uh, a lab that will be in person, one group of the lab that will be in person. Uh, this course has just two teachers. One is me, that, that I am Luigi De Russis, and the other one is Fulvio Corno that you will see tomorrow in the lecture and Professor Corno will do the first, let's say the first half of the lecture of this course. And I will do the other half and all the labs. So we will meet frequently for the lab hours and also for some lectures as well. So this is briefly the outline for, for today. We will speak about motivation, course content and methodology that we would like to use in this course, the exams, probably most importantly, and how to contact us, even if you probably know uh, most of the information about how to contact us. So let's start a bit briefly from the motivation. So why should a computer engineer or a data science engineer uh, care about human computer interaction, care about humans in, in general, uh, when deploying and designing and creating uh, systems, technological system. So you, up to now you have seen uh, a lot of things from the technological point of view. You know about uh, processors, you know about maybe some, some of you know about robotics and networks, software, programming language, software engineering, and uh, data set, data center, how to handle data maybe. And so you, you have the, all this knowledge and concept and competencies, also practical, not only theoretical, about computer engineering, computer science, data science, uh, electronic systems, uh, and so on, uh, for which you can use this for build things, to understand better how things work, and all, all this, this item here. So you have, let's say you are expert, or you are trying to be expert in one or more of these uh, field here, being there again, software part, being there in the robotic part or the vision part or the microprocessor part or the network and so on. And when this uh, technology and with these base uh, areas, again, software, hardware, network and so on, uh, contemporary technology, contemporary system uh, as it exists and we have a lot of devices that rely on this technology. And we have laptops, but we also have smartphones, computers, uh, microwave, a thermostat in our home. Some of this technology is, is or will be in the cars, in the ATM systems, and so on. And so all of this technology could be fundamental and uh, baseline for creating all this technology that is already, these, these devices that are already in the market and some of them are already in our house. So what is missing here in this picture? What's missing, we have base technology, we have devices, what is missing are the users, the people that ultimately will use this. And so this could be great. This could be very sophisticated, smart devices. They could do a lot of performance could be here, but if they are not usable, if, if people cannot use it, cannot understand how to use it, can control them, they are probably useless or they tend to be useless. Uh, obviously there are some of these devices or this system that are totally automatical and that doesn't rely at all, doesn't need or consider users at all. But users for most of the other system are an integral part of the system. Uh, because you can create again, a computer application, a graphical application, a mobile application that, and then if people cannot use it or cannot accept it, they will probably not download in it or turning off your device, turning off your system. Or if you are thinking about machine learning, uh, people will not provide you with the data that you need. So people are really everywhere in this process. Uh, and you, you just didn't uh, probably see them too much during your uh, career up to now, at least at, at Polytechnic. So people, the intersection 
between people and all these technologies that are built in very sophisticated way, but this according to this base technology is the cornerstone is the point that is missing. And so during this course, we will try to close this gap. We will try to understand how to make this technology uh, either maybe the, the most easiest one to the most complex one, even thinking about AI powered system uh, that usable, used and used by people. So not only usable for people, but also actually used for people, used by people. Uh, so that you cannot, you have, you cannot, you don't have a very great, a usable, maybe user interface, whatever it is, it could be a graphical user interface, could be a voice user interface, could be a robot uh, that interacting with with the humans, but uh, not only so usable, so very nice and very adequate and understandable, but also used so that the user don't want to uh, turn off your, your system, but continue to use more and more if they, because they are answering their own needs. So uh, differently from probably most of the courses you have taken from here uh, up to here, uh, we are not focusing on the te technological side. We are not uh, thinking about technology first, we are thinking about people first. And for people, we typically intend people that are different from us. I am not probably the best person to design for designing a system for you know uh, nurses because I'm not a nurse. I don't have this experience. So also factors uh, for the target application, the target user that you are uh, planning for uh, is important and is something that we are going to to consider in this course. So the challenge in, in all this system and all this picture is how to design user experience, again, those user interfaces that I mentioned before, graphical, vocal, or uh, interacting with some physical devices. Uh, so how to design or to create this uh, experience for users interacting with modern application device or environment if we consider maybe Internet of Things environment. And how we can exploit all the novel interaction methods that are nowadays provided by touch, voice, natural interaction, gesture, and so on. And most importantly, uh, how to ensure that people can use those interfaces and systems uh, with, let's say, joy instead of frustration. That is, so maybe joy and frustration are a bit exaggeration, but the point is how to avoid these people turn off your, your system, your application, or throw away your, your application or your system or stop using it, but they are pretty happy, let's say, uh, to, to use those, this application. So not only a system that is technologically uh, or computationally perfect, very, very good with performance and so on, but also really, really usable and understandable by the people that are target user of your system or your application or your device. And here we have, because since we are in the introduction, we have just to quote about uh, human computer interaction from uh, computer engineering slash computer science perspective. And the first one is by uh, Jeff Atwood. It was in 2006. And it say that, to, to quote that we, we really like uh, it say that deep down inside every software developer, there is a budding graphic art designer waiting to get out. And if you let that happen, you're in trouble, in trouble, or at least your user will be anyway. Because why? Because software developers typically have, again, as, as I said before, a very technological focus uh, approach and a certain mindset that is perfect for, for them, for creating software, for engineering, uh, devices and so on, but not always uh, suitable for users. And in the next slide, we have an example of this developer attitude. So you see these, these interfaces, both of them are really a lot of actions, a lot of check boxes, a lot of buttons uh, put in sort of random order and so on. So this is probably the developer attitude. I, I see a device, I see an application, I know how to, to work this application and I am tempted to expose every function to the user because this is uh, the way in which I, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about 
features and thinking about the capability and thinking about performance. And I would like to expose this thing for, for which probably I also work a lot to, to create that. And we will get back to this in a minute. Uh, the other sentence is, uh, the other quote is quite recent, just two years ago, from a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in uh, um, the United States, uh, Jeffrey Bygum, that works in human computer interaction as a research researcher. And he said that two hardest problems in computer science are one, people, two, convincing computer scientists or engineering that the hardest problem in computer science slash engineering is people and three off by one errors because computer scientists. Um, so let's go back to this developer attitude. Uh, so this is uh, the Vuget. Uh, this is an interface for Vuget, the command line uh, Linux based uh, tool. So you, you maybe know that Vuget allow you to get, uh, perform HTTP requests to a given URL and it has a lot of options. And so this is command line and you can have this option in the command line without any problem, this developer uh, start thinking how to uh, create a user interface for this command line tool as it just decided to, uh, this is a real things, and this just decided to basically bring all the feature in the user interface in, let's say again, in not a really precise order. Uh, so just to make you an example, all these, all these are checkbox, so I can, select all of them. I can select HTML here, I can select JPEG, a zip, and this is probably fine here. Uh, but if you think about the running option, I can select no info and all info. So I would like that the program uh, give me eight, both no information at all and all information together because these are checkbox. I can uh, select all of them if I want. So you can append the log file and also overwrite at the same moment, the same log file. So I can both append and overwrite according to this uh, graphical user interface. And then how can I start this? Uh, I should press here, start to get after filling this field in a reasonable way. Uh, I should press this start, we'll get start dot but or add. And which is the difference between these? And if I empty the get start, then I can start again or not. And I can exit, I exit with this exit. Uh, probably, or uh, if I close here, it's the same, probably yes. Uh, and this minus here means, who knows? And um, again, and there is also a pro mode that I don't want to imagine what this is, because if this is the simple mode, the basic mode, I don't want to again to imagine, which is the professional mode, the expert mode of this user interface. And, and this is another example. This is an exaggeration, I bet that this is done with purpose uh, about a user interface that is so over cluttered of, of things that you don't even understand what, what you're really doing, when you have to look, when you have to click. And this is get got from this uh, website so you can read. Uh, but again, the, the title is enter the matrix. So you can imagine what is the topic of this uh, conversation that is going on on that website. So we would like to really avoid all these kind of things. These are extreme probably, but we will see that also in systems and application that we use daily on a daily basis, we can find problems, several problems that could be severe or could be uh, not, 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 not really hard to solve, but we will see that these are problems that we, we may encounter, especially because we are not used to, and we as, again, engineer or scientists, we are not used to, to think from day one from the, to, uh, from the user perspective. We don't have, and we are trying to do in this course, we have tried to, to show you uh, the, the, the user mindset that it could be different from the developer mindset. So how we can, let's say, speak about this user-based mindset uh, we, we are going to do this in this course by uh, learning and both applying things. We are going to learn key concepts related to human computer interaction, starting from what is human computer interaction, that is a topic of tomorrow. And we will speak about user experience, we will speak about usability, uh, design methods, so how to create things, evaluation technique, uh, qualitative and quantitative. And we will show you. Uh, 
design process to create user interface, again, not only graphical user interface, in general user interface, things that interface with, the pe with people, one or more people, uh, according to a human-centered process, so process that is centered and it's totally around the humans, uh, including also modern, in quote, interaction methods and focusing not only on web and mobile, but in general by providing example on different uh, field and different devices that are around us on a daily basis. And we don't totally show you this, we will try to apply and we will ask you to apply some of this thing, especially the human-centered design process toward the design and development of a project. Uh, for which we envision three big steps. So the first one is eliciting needs. So avoiding the issue of the developer attitude before, but we will start from eliciting needs from the users. We are going to do, for instance, an application for doctors. Well, we need to understand which, which are the needs of doctors before start to doing the application. And then we will follow the process and in following the process, we will develop a result that is a prototype, is not the final version of anything, it's just an advanced prototype, but it's a prototype. And we will also analyze and evaluate the interfaces in the prototypes that we are going to do uh, to create in this uh, process. So, from a very high perspective, this is how the course is uh, structured. Uh, we will have an introduction to human computer interaction that counts for around 10% of, of the hours uh, with the definition, what is, which is the human, her capability, and the computer, and so on. Then this human-centered process about building interactive application, building interactive uh, system, that is a great part of the theoretical task uh, but the theoretical part of the course, uh, which will include the need finding strategies. So how to extrapolate in a proper way needs from a user, how to create this prototype, low, low fidelity prototypes, high fidelity prototype, middle fidelity proper prototypes, uh, and so on. What is a mental methods, uh, which, how we can conduct evaluation on these interfaces to understand if they are properly done or not well done and how to change that, how to proceed with uh, our process and our design. Then another 30% of the course will be practical, will be application, will be project, and uh, you will decide a specific application domain and with some constraint, more of this in a few minutes, and we will use web technologies to do this project and these applications since it, that should be a common base, a common background for all or at least most of you. And then finally the course, so this, this first part could be let's say the foundation uh, plus the practical part of uh, human computer interaction, then we have a more let's say advanced and interesting if you want uh, part that is behind WIMP, uh, WIMP, st WIMP stand for window, icon, uh, mouse uh, menu a pointer that is the traditional desktop based application with mouse with window uh, icons to indicate things menus uh, and pointer for, for a mouse so everything that is not a classical desktop slash laptop uh, system so we will briefly uh, speak about interaction with ai system a voice user interface high tracking and so on with also some example and developer tools in specific uh, topic uh, that we are going to, to use and develop, develop, especially those for which we are going to develop the project on. So this is, let's say, the, 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 the let's say the introductory part, uh, how we can, how we are going to do this? Uh, well, we are following both a project-based and a problem-based methodology here. So you will learn by doing a project that will be a group project. I can anticipate that, you, that from you. And the project will start, and this is the project base, and the project will start from a problem that you will uh, 
identify with our help and that a problem is start from uh, and it's extracted from real users need. So it's not a, a toy problem that we are going to uh, script today or tomorrow or invent in a few days, but it's something that we are going to elicit and extract from the real people, the people for which you are going to design and to create this, this project. And we will show you how to do this, obviously. So the project uh, will be developed during the semester with intermediate milestone and deliverable to be uh, deliverable, delivered to us. Again, more of this in a few minutes. And we will use, as you already know, uh, contemporary communication and project development tools and technologies like Slack, uh, Git and GitHub and so on. So this is the schedule of, of our course. Uh, we will have two lectures, one on Tuesday at this hour, today, now. The next one tomorrow in the morning, 11, 1 p.m. That will be always online. And then on Thursday, starting next week, so not this Thursday, but Thursday of next week, October 8, we will start with the lab hour. And we will have two groups. In any case, we will have two groups. The first one should be, well, let me stress this, should be, because we are not still sure. We, we are waiting for a final confirmation in Labim, so in person. And the second group will be online. If we don't have the Labim hour, we will have two groups online. Uh, how? to access to this one hour health, we still don't know. We will tell you as soon as uh, we know, probably you have to follow the same procedure that you follow from uh, for the uh, uh, for, for the booking the places in Polytechnico. Uh, so there is a question in the chat to say if the two groups will alternate. Uh, so if they're, if they're both online, probably not. If there are one, a group in person and more people uh, that want to join in person, we will try to find a way to ensure that everybody will be in, uh, everybody that can you know, be in person can be at least uh, once per two weeks uh, in person. Uh, But again, being online, it should be easier. If they are both online, it should be easier to, to, to understand how, how to, to perform these group activities. For the first week, we will have uh, a let's say normal division. When we start group project, probably it's better if some group is in the first, let's say in the, the, the group one, and other groups are, or the entire group is, the entire student group is in one uh, specific uh, lab. Perfect. Uh, there is a comment from Professor Corner that is in the chat uh, that said that booking system should already guarantee that you are booked on week, let's say one, then the others will have priority on the week two. Let's say in theory again, uh, but we will see. So you don't have to worry about this this week. Uh, we will uh, consider all this information for next week that I'm at. Lab starting October the 8th. Learning material. Learning material we have, and you already know our course website, that is the one depicted here with slides, full schedule for this, for the current week at least, with links for the Zoom calls and other information like deliverable templates, dead deadlines, supplementary material, and so on. As you know, video lecture will be, uh, so all the lectures in class, not lab, will be recorded and they will be uh, put on a playlist on YouTube and our, on the Portal della Didattica. And on GitHub, we will have an organization, we have an organization that's called the Polito HCI 2020 that will host template exercises, your group work and so on. So this is a, a lot of tools and um, links for you. No, obviously, the, the, another question from the chat, do you have to participate to lab in person during the semester because I'm not on location? Obviously not. We have two groups, one 
in theory, we will have one group in person and the other one online. So we, we should be able, we will accommodate everybody, uh, everybody. So if you are not here, you will join always the online, um, the online lab. And if your group is instead in the part of your group is instead in the in-person lab, you can join remotely and work together with your group without any problem. We have two groups also for this to accommodate both uh, needs. The one that wants and can be in Turing, probably again, they will and they can, the one that cannot, they can join online. Uh, but one thing that I forgot to say before is that while lecture will be, be recorded, as I said, labs will not, and labs are where the project will be mostly developed. So these are really the most important, let's say the most important hour for the course. So if, if you need to skip one hour, in, one hour and a half in that week, in a week, please don't skip the lab hour. Skip, maybe skip the lecture because it, it's, it will be recorded, but the lab hour is extremely important for for you, for your project, for your exam, for completing well the, the course, because the lecture will be again recorded and so you can uh, watch them later on. But the, having said that, please consider to join the, the online lecture, otherwise we are going to speak to a uh, nobody on Zoom. So it's better to have some let's say, audience or people that can interact with. Uh, as say, okay, about still about collaboration and communication. Again, project on GitHub, as already said before, we have a Slack um, group. We only we we will only use Slack for communication with students. We are not going to use the teaching portal. We are not going to use email. The default answer via email will be use Slack or something like that. So if you are not on Slack and some of you are not, aren't, I don't know if one you that are online, but maybe others that will see uh, the video after, the lecture after, uh, please join the, this Slack workspace. There is a link to join among the news on the portale or della didattica. Uh, so online there is a link that lasts up to the end of October. So please click on this link before the 21 of October. And in addition, uh, I will have an uh, office hour that is totally free, totally facultative, you can, optional. You can join or you can skip it, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you want, from, five, from four to five Italian time at this address. This will be always the same address. So if you need to pose some question and you don't want to do it on Slack because maybe you have to show something, and you cannot do during the hour of, of the lectures uh, or the lab, obviously, you have this extra opportunity to have this office hour, what, what the, in Italian we call the consulenza, but uh, so it's a moment in which you can jump in in this hour, ask your question, and then if you want, you can leave. And so this will be every Monday from next Monday, obviously, not yesterday, up to the end of the course at this same address for the entire course. And I will be there every Monday, 4 to 5 p.m. Italian time. Uh, okay, quickly about internal communication. I already told you that all contact with us must be, take place on Twitter, uh, sorry, on, on Slack, no email messages. And on Slack, you already have seen probably that we have three channels, the general channel that is reserved to official communication by us. You cannot write on the general channel. The discussion channel instead is for question, requests, ideas, clarification. Uh, if you need to shop for team members, you can use the discussion channel by any student and we will read and respond if needed, if our response by us is needed. Instead, the random channel is for free discussion among students. You can post it, post them, whatever you, you want. In addition, group of students may create private channel for you for collaborating on the project. The private channel, we will not see uh, by, by design private channel. We cannot see private channel by default, uh, even if we are the owner. So feel free to create a private channel for group conversation or just for one-to-one -one conversation and 
be sure that nobody will see actually what you are writing today if you have some secret, I don't know, to write on it. Development, again, at a certain point, we will have to develop something. We will develop this, this project uh, that is also will be a software also project for, for a, a part towards the end of the course. And all the deliverables before that moment will be, again, on GitHub. So use it. If you don't have an account on GitHub, create one and choose a nickname that may last maybe forever. Don't use your student ID as a number of the, uh, as, a num as the, the nickname for GitHub, but just maybe found, found a better name for your account so that you can continue to use that after university. And again, if you want to set to register with the studenti.polito.it email address, you may get free private repositories and other uh, free software and services. Uh, you can read at uh, education.github.com. And GitHub is offering for us uh, an organization for the course with a lot of private repositories. So all your group project will be uh, private and all visible to team members and to us, and to us as teacher. Uh, we also plan, obviously, to uh, use the Polito HCI 2020 organization to host your group, your project repositories that will be created. We plan to create two repositories, one for all the material, not say not software, not code, and the other one for the final prototype. But if you need more repository as a group, please ask, don't worry, we can create quite a lot of, of repository. And as a recommendation for this course and probably in general in life, always commit your intermediate work somewhere on GitHub or on other uh, version control system. But this is, again, the software developer slash engineer that is speaking. Uh, study material. There is, let's say, not, there is not one suitable textbook for the entire course. Uh, the study material that will be enough for this course, for the exam, uh, will be the teacher slides, will be the lecture that we, you, will, you will see. And we can, we will probably suggest some books for some of the topics and also some paper and links on, on the website or on Slack, but they are not mandatory. Okay, so don't, if you don't want to buy a book, uh, don't do it, don't, don't do that. Uh, slides and video and conversation with us will be more than enough for uh, understanding the topic and tackling the issues very well and overcome the exam uh, in a satisfactory way as well. But the material uh, for which that we, that we are using in this course, the slide that we drafted for, for this course are mainly taken from this book. So just is uh, an overview of some books that you may be uh, you, you may, may find some reference in slides. So the first one is this one, uh, a human computer interaction book. Uh, it's the third edition, it's for, it's for 2004, so it's not really recent. And it's a generic book about human computer interaction from a, let's say, didactical perspective, quite didactical perspective. Another book quite similar to, to the first one is this one in black here, the designing the user interface uh, strategies for effective human computer interaction that is a little bit more recent. So just four years ago and then in this sixth edition now. So these are two, let's say fundamental books, base books that are cover um, not without much deep, a lot of topics that we are going to to cover as well in the course. Uh, then we have other two books that we are going to use in the course. The first one uh, is Human Computer Interaction and Mer an Empirical Research Perspective that is more focused on research, especially. And we are going to use this, uh, uh, some material from this at the end of the course when we are speaking about evaluation with users, because that, that are topics that are let's say, in the middle between teaching and also research because they are widely used in research and also in practice by practitioner in the field. And also these uh, designing interactive system, third edition, 2014, they are not really, really recent, uh, but they have some really valuable material that we, 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 we got it from uh, build for building the entire course. Uh, other two books instead, 
more, uh, let's say, not didactical uh, as a reading, if you want, uh, that are quite famous uh, are these two. Uh, the first one is the design of everyday things by Don Norman in a revised edition of 2013. Uh, this is a book uh, about reflecting uh, on how things that we, we encounter every day is, are, are designed. Um, so this is, uh, if you imagine this, to, 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 you, to drink tea from this, you will understand that this is not well designed as a thing because you cannot, uh, you cannot really uh, drink some tea from here in a, in a cup. And the second one is called Don't Make Me Think. And again, another book of 2014. And uh, it's a book about uh, web design and website uh, mainly. Uh, it's called A Common Sense Approach to Web and Mobile Usability. And it's about, as the title say, uh, don't make the user think uh, what to do when you are creating a website. So when the user is navigating your website or your mobile, mobile application, according to the author, they don't have to think a lot where to click, uh, what to write, uh, what to select for using the website or the mobile application uh, with ease and with efficiency. So these are not didactical book. These are more, you can more, let's say, uh, contemporary book by the reading uh, to, to be read uh, also in, in different contexts. So finally, the exam. And, and more of these in the next set of slides. So the exam is uh, made of two parts. The first one is a written test. And the second part is the evaluation of your group project. The written text will count for 40% of the final grade for a total 13 points out of, out of 30. And it will be about, let's say the theoretical part of the course. So design methods, uh, design processes, uh, analysis instruments, uh, small exercises and so on. It will be on paper. Uh, it will not have coding answer a question, and it will be made by four open questions, uh, and you have one hour to answer all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find some sample and past exam on the course website under the exam session. Uh, the second part accounts for 60% of the grade, so this is the most consistent part of the, of the exam, and it will be, it's again about the evaluation of the project in group, and it will be about evaluation of deliverables, uh, so material that we are asking you to deliver during the course and the source code and the demonstration of the advanced prototype that you are going to develop at, up to the exam. And I will tell you more about this in a couple of minutes. Uh, both part, the test and the project must be passed in the same academic year. In any order, you can come to the first uh, exam and have all the written tests and then have the project evaluation in September, or you can have the project evaluation now and the written test in September. So the important thing is that they must be passed in the same academic year. So both part should be done by September uh, 2021. In any order is up to you, uh, for, for the project as a group and for the written test as an individual. So do you have any question about this? And then we will go a little bit deeper about uh, project group and evaluation and deadlines and so on. If you have some questions, please write them in the chat. Okay, I don't see any question. So we can 
speak a little bit more about the project. So we will focus in this remaining part of the lecture about this part of the exam. So project in group, 60% of the grade, 20 points. So which is the goal? Uh, so this will be a semester long group project, group of four people, not three, not two, not 11, four is a fixed number. Don't ask for less than four because the answer will 99%, 99.99% no, four people. Uh, the goal will be to give hands on experience with this human centered design process that I mentioned before. And this experience will be developed by building a prototype. Again, not the final device or the final interface or the final mobile app or the final whatever that you are going to sell tomorrow or the day after the exam, but a prototype. Something that is incomplete, something that is a proof of concept, something that is not polished and 100% ready to, to go to, to the market or to be downloaded from somewhere. A prototype, an advanced prototype, a realistic prototype, but a prototype. And to build a prototype, as I mentioned before, we will use web technology. We are not going to use mobile application or others. Uh, we are not developing mobile application others or desktop application. We are just using web technologies for enabling us to build a prototype that could represent maybe a mobile application, but it will be developed as with web technology. Again, this is why, because uh, you all should have a stronger foundation of web technologies from the uh, web application one course that you did last semester. This prototype, uh, in addition to follow the, this design process should adopt a behind the wind technology and it will need to serve a chosen target population. So you have to find, to imagine who is the users, who will be the users of your system and build your prototype starting from that decision. Uh, and obviously you have an idea of the project. The project will be mostly carried carry on during the lab hours. So this is why lab hours are particularly important. And Obviously, project will follow the human-centered design process that we are going to describe in the lectures, and deliverables will be will be corresponding to the completion of some specific steps. And we will have four deliverables in, before the exam. Five, let's say four slash five. So instruction for the group project. Uh, groups are four students. Uh, the topic, the idea of the, pro of the project is proposed by the group. So we are not going to sign you an idea, but you, you should build a group and came, came to us with an idea. And I will tell you at the end of this presentation how to, to tell us which is the group and which is the idea. Obviously you will have some predefined goals and predefined constraint about the idea uh, and the topic obviously. We are going to ask you to deliver four uh, deliverables that will be evaluated the day of the exam. So you are going to give us the deliverable during the course, you will receive our feedback from us. And using the feedback, if you are uh, really smart, you can improve your deliverables because the deliverables will be evaluated at the end of the course. So during the course, you will just receive feedback on how to improve your deliverable to get a better chance to, uh, to get a better mark, for instance, uh, at the exam or to, to improve the reading and to have this more understandable, also to understand better, uh, which are probably some mistakes that you are going in, in the process. So if you then incorporate this feedback, you will, we will reevaluate everything from scratch the day of the exam. And this will apply for three out of the four deliverables. And then during the exam, you will have a final presentation of your prototype. 
that means a demonstration of your prototype plus an oral presentation plus a brief discussion about something that you brought in the deliverables about your demonstration about your oral presentation of how the project will work for the final presentation all students must be present and all students must present obviously also online but the, the entire team should be uh, up to uh, present the project in that moment for the group project the evaluation criteria are these listed here so the effort you invested the originality, the complexity, the richness of the solution, the methodological and technical correctness, the completeness and the quality of the deliverables for which feedback is, are particularly important, the presentation, uh, the demonstration and the oral discussion, plus an individual contribution. We will try to uh, balance the, the evaluation of the group project according to the individual's contribution of each team member. But for this, your contribution, your uh, initiative, your honesty is important to also understand who is working, who is not working so much. Hopefully, everybody is working a lot, but or the right amount of time. But if it's not, please let us know. Uh, team composition. Again, team of four people. I, I want to repeat it one more time. Uh, it's your responsibility as a student to form a team. We may help if you want, but we are not going to form a team for you. Uh, and you can obviously use Slack uh, and lab hours when we started them uh, for shopping for teams, member, refining ideas, and so on. Uh, as a rule of thumb, we would say teams cannot be changed during the semester. We would like to have 40, the teams starting, let's say, in the second week or of the course that will remain the same up to the end of the semester, up to the exam. Uh, and as I said before, each team will work on their own GitHub repositories, one for the deliverables and the other one for the code. And we expect that all team members contribute in both repositories. Uh, the I brought the deliverable number one is not enough. I only brought the deliverable number one is not enough for passing the exam. So team members, team composition. Now, what is a project? Again, a project is a prototype application. You can choose your topic uh, realized with web technology. This prototype application must include a behind the WIMP interaction technique that will change. We, we are going to change this every year. So for this year, uh, where we would like to see prototype application which include advanced mobile interaction. What does it mean? It means that project must provide an interaction mobile modality, not the only one, uh, not the main maybe, but one interaction modality that is coherent with the topic of your project that is stemming from the mobile sensor of the device. So we are going to de de develop, you are going to develop a web application that is running on a mobile device. And the mobile device could be a smartphone, could be a tablet, could be a smartwatch, just whatever you want, uh, but is running in a web browser with a screen big as uh, a, screen, uh, a smartphone or whatever, and using the mobile sensor. And, and which are these mobile sensor that are enabled by web technologies. Uh, they could be multi-touch. They could be force touch. So how long, how strong you press the screen. It could be data from accelerometer. If you imagine some games, maybe accelerometer could be interesting to move things on the screen. It could be simple camera acquisition, like, I don't know, there is light or it's dark, the camera is covered or not, and do something in response of this. It could be something about the microphone. People are speaking, uh, there is some noise, there is a specific sound or something like that. Or other things that stem from the mobile sensor, we will uh, provide a more comprehensive list uh, as soon as the course is moving uh, forward. But these are probably the main, uh, the main interaction that the mobile phone uh, is allowed to, to, uh, to have in, with web technology. 
so this is quite open. We just have these three constraints about this the, pro the project that you are going to to, uh, to create. And the idea is, again is, is our, yours. Uh, these are the three constraints. You can choose the target user population and one or more target device. Uh, if they are mobile, obviously device, you can imagine uh, something for helping nurses something for helping stu student studying, uh, something for helping teacher and, and so on. So you can choose the target population and the idea what is this something to help. Uh, obviously projects should be something suitable, uh, showing off to your extended family. So don't do things that you cannot publicly share. And projects should, should either connect to some existing API to get maybe information or use a source or real world data if you want to show things on the uh, on the application. So maybe not just not everything a lorem ipsum or with uh, unsensical data because we we also need to understand. Uh, you also need to, to dis display uh, the proper data, the proper information in your interface, or to communicate the proper information uh, on the interface on the interface, not just random text. Again, to stress this one more time, the prototype is a prototype, is a high fidelity interactive prototype, not a final website, not a final web application, not a final application, it's a prototype. So it's not required to fully implement standard feature, even if they are extremely important. So which feature you are not asked to implement or to think about. You don't need to implement sign up. You don't need to implement sign in. You don't need to implement search, at least not in a very sophisticated way, at least with the exception that if, you, if your application is only search based. So all these standard feature is, uh, they are not, not requested and you shouldn't spend one minute working on that. So always, for instance, assume that your user is already registered in your application and has already logged in. Don't spend, again, one second doing a sign-up form, a login form, neither in the initial prototype or in the code prototype. Because, because this is an interactive prototype to get an idea, to experiment some specific uh, objectives, some specific ideas, some specific goal, not a product to be downloaded or, sold or sold or something like that. Just to be clear one more time. Again, for technology, uh, I already told you that we are going to use web technologies for the front end, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, uh, React, whatever you prefer. Uh, you, are, you are free to choose uh, any web technology you, you feel confident with. Uh, from the server side, if you need a server, you may connect to existing API or create your own server like in, in Node.js and a database, SQLite, MySQL, whatever. For this course, you are going to use the web development skill that you acquired in the past and I already mentioned the Web Application One course, except for the uh, behind WIMP um, modalities that we are going to show you something according to what you are going to, to choose in your project. And in general, in creating your interactive prototype, follow the best practice of web development and software engineering that you already learned in the past. So this is in general about the project. I, I told you that we'll have some deliverables in some deadlines. Uh, we will have four intermediate checkpoints that we call the milestone. Uh, with specific deadlines uh, that are in a couple of slides. And milestone will be again evaluated as part of the exam. These deliverables will be evaluated as a part of the exam and we follow the lab content. So if you follow the lab, you automatically have this deliverable in, in progress. Uh, and in addition to the formal feedback after you deliver this, this milestone, this document, you can also ask for preliminary feedback during the lab hours or during the office hours, if you want. 
the milestone, this document to be delivered, will be markdown documents in the group repository, and they will follow a template that we are going to provide. So you will need to, to use a template to give us the information, the important information that you, we are asking you. As I told you before, uh, this will be evaluated as a part of the exam, the day of the oral exam. Uh, the feedback, the formal feedback will be given on GitHub as an issue after each deadline. And the discussion time will be in the following week uh, or of Slack or when, when, when appropriate. And this, these are the four milestones. Uh, so the first one is in week five. Today is week one. So in four weeks, we will have the first milestone that is about project description and need finding uh, for which you are going to, to learn about it in this, in this and the next week. Uh, the milestone number two will be in week seven. So after two weeks, it will be a storyboard and a paper prototype, so a low fidelity prototype. In week nine, we will have a white frame, so middle fidelity prototype and an evaluation on that prototype. And finally, one week before the exam. So if you give, would like to give the oral exam in September, there will be one week before the date of the oral exam in September, you have to deliver the last deliverable uh, that is the user evaluation or your interactive prototype. And in addition to this four deliverable, we have a deliverable zero, a milestone zero, that is due next week, next uh, Wednesday, October the 8th, uh, or next Thursday, October the 8th, and remember if it's Wednesday or Thursday, but it's October the 8th, uh, end of the day, all the deadline will be end of the day. So 11, 59, 59, 59, and so on PM. And you will have to submit a group composition with four information. Uh, the name, the student ID, the GitHub username, and the email of all the group members, so four people, a project title, and a project idea with some detail. Uh, the submission link will be uh, is on a Google form. You can click on this link if you want. I can click on this link. And you will see that you are requested to have a project title, a project ID according to specific structure, and I will show you a little bit more now and some detail about the target population you selected and the general activity topic of your project. This is already open. You can fill up this form from today up to the 8th of October, uh, end of the day. So how to select the project topic? So since in the first step, we still don't know the actual user needs. So imagine we are going to do uh, something to help students, uh, middle school students. So we don't know yet their needs, what they want to do in this something domain. And we, we are going to discover that in this need finding phase that will be part of the first milestone. Uh, but we, we need to, to define a project topic. And we can define the project topic in terms of what is the domain of the project and which is the target population of the project and in which context could we help this population in this domain. So in this moment for the topic, we ask you not to write specific needs because you don't know the specific needs. Don't write functionalities. The application should do X, no. With the application, you can select a three minute workout. No, no functionality, no task, no technology in this first um, milestone zero, what they call the milestone zero. There will, be, there will be time to provide this information in the next milestone, in the first, in the second, and so on. So, but for now, uh, you don't know needs because you have to elicit needs from actual user. So you have to think about project topic in terms of the domain of the project, who is the users you are going to, to help, let's say with this project and in which context. And you have to summarize this topic by following the structure. We would like to support, help, announce, whatever, a specific target population to while in general activity or topic. And we are asking you in the form and this sentence is written in the form uh, to fill a sentence like this. This. So we would like to support students, middle school students to study better or something like that. Not always, not only study better. 
uh, something more than this. Uh, I, can I repeat what? From, from where? Enrico. Uh, I, I didn't say a lot. Uh, I say that all these things are uh, obviously in the next milestone and you are requested for now to summarize the topic uh, that you chose according to this structure. We would like to support, help, enhance people, a specific target to while in something else activity. So we would like to support uh, middle school student to study better mathematics online, for instance, or something like that. So this is a, a short uh, summary of this. And so just to give you a more concrete idea, uh, let's took a simple project that we called cooking at home. So the first question here was about the domain, the second was about the target population and the third about the context. So let's imagine to create a project now. Uh, so the application domain could be at my own cooking service by Uber like cooks. So people that came in your house to cook some dishes, some meals, a dinner or, or a lunch. And this is the application domain. So very, very vague in general, but yet specific, we are speaking about cooking service at my own, not at the restaurant, not uh, by delivery, just people that comes to my house and uh, cook. Uh, the target population are, could be, we could have two target population in this service. We can have the client, people that receive cooks, and uh, we can have um, chefs, people that go in the house and cook for others, at least these two people. Um, and the context could be a lot. We can focus about reservation and the matching between the client and the chef, uh, or we can focus on select how to select the recipe and how to procure ingredient for this process or, or, and or other things. So quite general context, but that give us an idea of what you want to do. You, you would like to intervene on cooking service at home by creating something for chefs and this something for chefs could help chefs during the reservation or the matching between the chef and the, the client or in selecting personalized recipe in selecting ingre ingredients procuring ingredients in a smart way or in a sophisticated in a sensible way and or other things and this is just to think so i would like to do this and this is to select a domain, a population, and a context. And notice that this is incredibly different from I would like to do an application for looking up recipes on the web, or I would like to do a social network for cooks, or I would like to do an intelligent brewing machine for personalized coffee making, or something like that. These are uh, application uh, features, uh, devices, not domain or context, nor target population. So this is something that we are not asking you to do now in the first milestone, the milestone zero. And similarly, we don't want to see that, that as a context, selecting the grams needed for each ingredients. So how to select recipes and procuring ingre ingredients, it's quite general. Uh, the application or the system should allow the user to select the gram needed for each ingredient is something totally different. And it's something that in this phase, we are not focusing on this because we don't know if this is something that is really needed or not. And if the goal, if the focus will be really on this uh, weight of ingredients. Neither filtering recipes according to their cost or to their topic or whatever, neither how to buy ingredients online. Mm -hmm. So notice that procuring ingredients uh, give you a wide range of options, including buying ingredients online, but not only, and this is more general and high level, because you, again, you don't know if your chefs that go in the other, other people 
uh, house to cook will need to buy ingredients online. They will need to buy ingredients, maybe not online, maybe yes, but we don't know yet. So we are not asking for this. Let me see if I can. We are not asking for this, but we are asking for this now. So in thinking your project, try to focus on the domain, the population, and one or more context in which this domain and this population can work. After thinking about it, you can concretize in a project idea. So the project title could be cooking at home. The project idea structured with the sentence that I show you before could be, we would like to support a chef that will cook at other people home to better manage and deal with people needs and expectation. And notice how to this better manage and deal with people needs and expectation is uh, in some way a high level uh, view of this reservation and user cook matching or selecting recipes and procuring ingredients because uh, you manage and deal with people with your client needs and expectation by providing a better service, by providing a better match, by uh, procuring better in some way ingredients and so on. So this is the sentence that uh, summarize your project idea. We'd like to support, help, whatever, who, chef that will cook at other people's homes to, to do what? To better manage and deal with people needs and expectations. Also while doing something or in doing something. And then the form asks you for other two information. One is the target population that obviously is a longer version of this chef that will call cook at other people's home. There could be user that will go to other user home and cook for them with some detail, like be they professional chefs or not. So you are including in this population people that are professional chefs and people that are not professional chefs. So you're expanding this short description here in something a little bit more uh, concrete and detailed. And the general activity is an expansion of this other part of the uh, sentence, this better manage and deal with people needs and expectation. What does mean manage and deal? Well, means improving at my own cooking service by Uber like cooks. That is basically from the application domain in this case. And it means better manage. It means managing user expectation and needs in different moments, reservation and user cooking matching, recipes and ingredient selection, etc. You can list here two, three, four, some initial moments and some initial ideas that you have. Then maybe you, after speaking with user, you will discover that these original ideas are not the important part and you will focus on a different moment, but at least you are still focused on cooking service at home by professional chef and not professional chef uh, in doing some activities and you are going to explore more these three, four activities that you are going to list here. So this is about the project. All these, so the Google form should be filled again by October the 8th. And this link is already on the website. If you go in the exam page on the website, uh, you will see the information that uh, I told you plus the deadline for the milestone, and in particular for the group composition, you will have already the, uh, the deadline, October 8. This will be a link uh, for submitting the form. I will enable this link after this lecture. And after this deadline, you will receive an okay or stop or revise the idea uh, from us. And people that receive okay, uh, we will create the repositories for the group work so that they can start working towards the milestone number one that is a more let's say concrete a more detailed project description than just this brief idea and brief topic uh, so david is asking is the application domain that you chose just a naive example it's fine it, it, 
it, it was a naive example. Uh, it could be fine, obviously, but the point is, all of this is that at a certain point, we are going to ask you to speak or to interact or to contact uh, your target population. So if you are going to select uh, people that are cooking, please be aware that at a certain point, you will need to contact some people that cook, some chef. So if you, if you know some chef, you are totally, it's totally fine that you um, contact them and use that as an application domain now, but at a certain point, you will have to speak with these people. Uh, so keep that in mind when writing the, the project topic and the uh, target population. At a certain point, you will be asked to speak in some way with this, your target population or to show your prototype to your target population. So don't choose a target population that is too hard to reach, but on the same point, don't choose a target population that is extremely easy. Like don't do everybody a project with university student, because obviously this is not really uh, useful for, for a, a large, for multiple project. Okay, so this basically closed the first uh, lecture. Uh, I will dedicate other five, 10 minutes for answering any other question if you have. So, so please, if you have questions, just write them in the chat or ask for speaking and uh, I will be glad to answer to your question. If you don't have any question instead, uh, we can stop the, the, the registration, we can stop the lecture and you will meet with Professor Corno tomorrow uh, at 11.30 a.m. on Zoom. He will share the link uh, on Slack and on the website in the schedule session uh, before the, the lecture. And with you, with him, you will speak about what is HCI and how it matches with the software, for instance, with the software development uh, process that you already um, explored and learned in, in previous courses. So now question, if you have. So please uh, maybe signal with no or some symbol if you don't have question, otherwise uh, we are not, so, so we are not waiting forever. Okay, thank you for these five people. Seven. Okay, great. So I, I will stop the, the registration now. Obviously, if you have any question that came to your mind uh, after, uh, feel free to write them on Slack in discussion or as direct message to me if you want to be, if it's something more private. Uh, but again, the, let's say the task for this week, uh, in addition to uh, following tomorrow lecture um, is to create these groups and came up with a, a project idea uh, for milestone number zero uh, that is due uh, again next week October 8th and again if you have any question on Slack or you can also ask something tomorrow to Professor, Co to Professor Corno uh, in the beginning or the end of the lecture. Uh, Enrico is asking one thing in, in, um, in the chat to say, will the simplicity of the project affect the grade? And if, for example, we propose a too much simple idea, you will ask us to think another one. Uh, so simple idea, it depends, I would say. So simple ideas not, are not bad um, because maybe after speaking with the user, you, you will discover this is not so simple. Um, we will, obviously, if it's 
incredibly simple or really banal, uh, we will probably ask you to revise them or to go deep in some topic or to think another one. So after the deadline, we will have a look at all the, your ideas. And if the ideas are fine, you can proceed immediately to the next step. If the ideas are not really appropriate, we will ask you to revise that idea quite quickly with some, uh, let's say, indication on how to, uh, what is not working well in your original idea. Um, so regarding the behind the WIMP implementation, do this functionality need to support the main feature or they can also be used as an alternative? Uh, example, upload a photo by taking a picture or uploading a photo. Uh, so in, in, ideally, they should be supporting the main features. Uh, but let me also say that the example that you are making, making now, maybe they will be the main feature or part of the main features. So we, we don't know yet. So keep in mind that you will need to think something mobile uh, for now, but don't focus right now on the behind the WIMP uh, features because you don't know which yet, which features uh, your application will have. So it should be something that is integrated in the, in the app is not something that should be segregated from the, the app like, ah, the app is doing that. And then if you want, if you can press here three times and you will see a puppy or something like that. So something that is coherent uh, and integrated in the idea. But for now, you don't, we don't know yet uh, which are the main, main features. So it's it probably a little bit early to, to think about main versus alternative features because maybe something that you now consider alternative will be one of the main features. So for, for now, keep in mind that you, you will have some ideally um, mobile uh, desktop application or a desktop. Um, uh, a question in the chat, how can we ask for help to team up with classmates? Is there in the website to just send your, your email to show we need help. Use Slack. Hmm? Uh, you have the discussion channel in Slack. If you if you are a team of maybe three people and you need a fourth member, ask. We have we are a people a team of three people and we need a fourth member. And the project will be maybe about something or send us a direct message to discover more. Similarly, if you are as let's say spare students without a team, ask on the discussion channel on Slack. I'm looking for a group. Um, anybody is interested because maybe there are other people without groups and you can f create a group uh, on your own maybe. So use Slack for that. Because everybody should be on Slack at a certain point must be on Slack on a certain point. Otherwise they are missing important news. Okay, so perfect. Uh, I can say that it's five minutes before seven, so I can stop the, the recording and uh, we will meet virtually or not, it depends next week in the lab because tomorrow the next week in the lecture, you will meet Professor Corman. So I will